Hi, I'm Steve Rose. I've been a chef for 35 years, proud owner of the greenest restaurant in the entire San Francisco Bay Area, and farmer here at Rose Ranch. We do things green around here though. What sets me apart is that green is not just a buzzword like a lot of people use. Green is an operative word and it's really easy to do. I'm gonna share with you my secrets on how to do this at home. We're gonna have fun and living green, living truly green is really a blast. I really believe that people want to learn how to live this way, they just don't know how to go about it. And that's the whole purpose of the show, is to teach people how to do that. And I'm gonna show you how to do it. Welcome to the Organic Rose. Hey, we're here with my friend Jack Chambers at Terravesco in Sonoma, California. What do we have? Well, today is feeding day at the worm farm and you can see that the stuff we're feeding is kind of chunky and then you roll back and you can go back here and we call this the pool table effect where this was fed last week, the end of last week, and you can see how the worms have just chewed through and wow. when we feed it looks like this. You have these chunky bits and then they'll just make it flat just like a pool table. So it's just a beautiful, oh, that's amazing. beautiful thing and uh, perfect weather for it right now. Nice middle of the summer. So they're real, real happy. What temperature does the, do the beds usually run at? Like right now? 90-ish. Um, um, in the warmer days, they'll get up to 100, but now just about 90. Okay. And, uh, they're happy if they get over 100, they start to be unhappy. And so then we use some combination of water and uh, cool nights to, to help them out. And, uh, but it's a, usually in Sonoma, we don't get really, really hot days that last. So we might get a heat wave of two or three days, but then we'll just mist them and uh, try to get them on top at night so they can cool down. And then, uh, We'll go back to warm days and cool nights, which they like a lot. Nice. So how many days, so you said it, you fed them last week. Is it like four days, five days to go from four this days. to this? Four days, yeah. We usually feed twice a week. And uh, so we fed last Thursday. And so this is, today is Tuesday. And so this has been four days. And they'll just chew through this material. And we'll wow. come back and feed them again on Monday or Tuesday. What exactly are you feeding them? We're feeding them organic dairy manure from a dairy out in the West County, uh, mixed with a little bit of rice hulls. They'll bed the cows on the rice hulls. Mm -hmm. And so we'll go out uh, on Mondays and Tuesdays and pick up a load of dairy manure, and then we'll come to the farm here and we'll compost it for a period of weeks, and then we'll feed it to the worms. So we're getting rid of pat pathogens, specifically E. coli. We're getting rid of weed seeds. People don't want weed seeds in their compost. Right. And cooling it off a little bit so that when we feed it to the worms, it won't heat up the worm beds. So when you pick up the manure, you're getting it as we refer to as hot, right? right. Being Meaning really fresh. Right, right. And uh, so you've got to take some of that heat energy out of it, but still have enough food energy for the worms. So it's a, a, a little bit of a trade-off, and uh, but we feel like uh, it, it's a great food source for the worms. It's what I've been feeding them for over 20 years. They're very happy. Well, that's amazing. And last time we were here, you had, I think, one bed, and now you have up. You're up to how many? Twelve. Wow. So, uh, yeah, it's we've we've had a lot of growth, and we're going to go over to a new facility and. Uh, we're gonna more than double in size again. So we feel like there's a market for the vermicompost, uh, mostly with vineyards. We're gonna get into uh, trees and uh, landscapers seem to like it too. So we think there's gonna be a broad base and it's gonna be an exciting time to move this out into the world. Well, I tell you, how long have we been using it for? Like, oh, five or six years? Seven yeah, years? seven years maybe and yeah. I just, <laughs> It's amazing. It's just an amazing product that I can't believe that I'd gone that long without using it. Yeah. But it's just for our vineyard, for our grapes, for all of our vegetable gardens. And it's just, you know, a cup at each at each emitter is just is an incredible, incredible thing. And then last year you brought in some extract. Right. And that's amazing, too. That's like this incredible extract of of of, of this, of, of this vermicompost. Right. And tell us about it. Well, it's a. We uh, take the vermicompost and uh, extract 
all the goodness out of it into a liquid concentrate and then uh, we sell that to people and we've been doing trials with that. It's an exciting thing. We did a pepper trial where we saw a 35% increase in usable fruit. That's huge numbers. Yeah, that's, uh, and we think the, the mechanism is that we get it into the root zone and it, the, the plants, when, when the vermicompost or the extract gets to the root zone, the roots seem to really respond we can reduce fertilizer use by 50%, and we think the microbial activity in the soil is making all of those fertilizers available to the plants. And plus the, the magic that the worms bring to it uh, that makes the plants grow. And I was telling you earlier that you could walk into the greenhouse and see the peppers and say that one, that one, that one, and that one had the extract. It was that noticeable. Wow. So. Uh, and like I say, 35% more fruit. So that, that's an exciting thing. It's all organic and uh, it's a great product. And also tell me, or tell us about <clears throat> the, the root ball difference in, in what you've noticed using the extract. Well, we've been doing trials with UC Davis and with Purdue and what people are seeing is that if you get the material right in the root ball, right, right in the root zone, that's where you get the most maximum efficiency of the product. And the roots really respond, and if you have a bigger root mass, uh, we're in a drought now, you can have uh, more resiliency against lack of water. Uh, you, you have a, a stronger plant, we have a bigger plant mass, uh, more biomass to the plant, and like I say, higher higher yields. So uh, With those kind of numbers, like 30% more fruit, 35% more fruit, and I've seen it myself on our tomato plants and our pepper plants last mm -hmm. year, it, it really is amazing. Those numbers, and, and really they are true. It's, I've worked with that product I've, and I've seen what it can do. Um, and this is not a commercial for your product, but, right. I, but I believe in it. I believe right. it because it really, really works. But those numbers just by themselves could really, could sell the product on its own, I would think. Right, well people, we have a lot of loyal customers and every time uh, a lot of the high-end vineyards will uh, be planting, they'll come back and uh, if they're planting three yards uh, or three acres, they'll get a yard of uh, vermicompost to put a cup or two in the hole. If it's a mountainside, you want two cups. And uh, they just see the results. It's, uh, you, and it's, it's that plain and that clear, you can actually see the plants that have the vermicompost and ones that don't. We can go out in the garden and you'll, you'll see just the amazing riot of color, uh, and that's all because of the vermicompost. Wow. So what kind of mix of soil to topsoil to, to um, vermicompost? There's probably 20% vermicompost in here, you know, and it was what we had left over. You know what's really interesting is that every leaf from every different varietal of lettuce, they're, because I grow a lot of these, just the thickness of the leaves really impresses me. Right. Well, that goes back to that resilience and that, that um, the strength of the plant. So everything is, is being used, and you see that across all of the, you see it in the vineyard. I mean, you can see the, how, just from here, how, how uh, nice the leaves look. The, the plants are strong. They're healthy. They're up. Uh, we have a great canopy this year. The vigor is, oh, my gosh. Yeah. I usually topped them in previous years, uh, like in mid-July, and I was out here uh, in mid-June doing the same thing, and, and uh, I just got it all topped and, and shaped uh, this last week. But you see it across the, the, you know, from lettuces to peppers to tomatoes, and you know, it's been hot around here this last weekend, mm -hmm. and, and these plants they don't they don't wilt down you know you can see a little heat stress but it's just like us going out and uh, and then they'll rebound as soon as the weather cools off look at this I mean and so this is what I was saying about the the, uh, the plants last year these were just uh, well you can see a little damage here this was probably one of the earlier but as she sprayed, well, here's, here's a couple. We gotta come back and start again. Uh, you know, with organic sprays, it's different than a, a pesticide. You know, you've gotta keep on it. Right. But uh, we've really reduced the flower damage this year with uh, the organic pepper spray. 
Well, it's, it's a good thing. Well, it's thing. all part, you know, you think of the old style farms. People used to have a few cows and a few pigs and a, you know, I, I would like to get sustainable where we could grow all of our own food, you know, tomatoes and peppers and can it and that, you know, you could have it all here and then have chickens for eggs and have honey for, you know, your toast and but you could have your own little thing. And you know what it does is it builds community. When we make wine, we have friends and family come and help us. Yeah. And when you're canning, you get a group of people together and everybody's doing a little part. And you know, it's, it's those kind of mindless chores, but that's where the real conversation happens. Uh, when you're just picking grapes and you're across from each other and talking about, you know, what's going on and uh, those are the exciting things to me about building community, having healthy food, and uh, just a healthy lifestyle. I mean, it's a great no, it's and it's nothing. Thing. It's nothing new, as we know. I mean, it's 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 been going on for centuries. But I love living that way as well. You know, having friends over, like you say, when we're canning tomatoes, or we're making our spicy sauce. It's, you have so much to bring to to the world. It's it, the world of of plants, and, and mm -hmm. whether they be landscaping, whether they be ornamentals, whether they be fruiting whether it be vineyards, what have you. I mean, it's just, it seems like it's, as I talk to you, it just more and more benefits come out. Right, well, and I've been doing it for 22 years. And when I came out here, people kind of looked about sideways uh, at it. But now it's like, uh, there's no such thing as an overnight success. You know, yeah, people yeah. usually, you know, they say you're an overnight success, but it takes years and years and years. But this, this product, uh, there's no downside. You're taking a, a, a dairy waste, you know, the Which the manure, we'll always have. Right? right. We have lots of it, billions of pounds, and turning that into something that can help people grow better food and showing people a different way that they don't have to use pesticides, they don't have to use chemical fertilizers. We'll go out to the garden and I'll show you. You know, you, you don't need that. If the plants are strong and healthy, just like people, you know, you can be in a room full of sick people and if your immune system is strong, you can avoid getting a cold. Right, right. And uh, with plants, it's no different. So that's, that's what we're trying to bring into the world is to show people a better way, a natural way, an organic way. And it's, you know, it's exciting to be a part of it. That's my legacy. So that's what I'm... Well, and a huge one it is, I'll tell you that. Yeah, it's thank just, you. It's, it's just, no, this is just... This is just amazing. Oh, there's, a, there's some guys right there. Oh, yeah. How did you even, I mean, you were a commercial pilot and now you're raising worms. Um, I came out here in 1992. Uh, I had a big garden in town. I lived in the town of Sonoma mm -hmm. and came out here. A friend said, you need to go out and see this worm farm. It, it's a mess, but it's, it's interesting. And so I came out and I bought a five gallon bucket of worms. I took it home, threw it in my compost pile and I had a five-day trip, so I went out on the five-day trip. I came back and I was really excited about looking in that compost pile, and when I got back, the worms had just gone through and transformed this compost pile. And it was very interesting to me, so I came back out and uh, talked to the guy, Earl Schmidt. He was in his 70s, and I said, this is really interesting to me. I, can I just help? And so I started showing up on days off and helping him with the uh, running the farm. And then one day, about three months later, we were in the back and uh, I'd been looking around and we were looking for property and this is five acres. 
and I had a building for my wife that could be a studio. And uh, I said, what do you like to do besides raise worms? And he says, oh, I love to fish, but I never have time. And so I just turned to him instinctively and I said, why don't you just sell this to me? And he said, hmm, I'll think about it. And so two weeks later, I came back and uh, he said, I'll sell you the farm. Wow. And then I went home. So that was like 11 in the morning. I went home, walked in the door. My wife was making lunch. And I said, Earl will sell it to us. The phone rang and it was a realtor in town cold calling and saying, we've got a client from Hawaii who would like to buy a house on the east side. Are you interested in selling your house? <laughs> and that's the way this whole thing has been. When I've run out of money wow. or something would happen, we'd get a big sale. Uh, you would come out and we'd do a video. You know, it would be, it's, it's, it's been this wonderful progression. And that's how it started. And when we bought the place, it was a mess, so we had to redo the house. I knew nothing about worms, so I had to go and uh, go to look at microfish uh, files. It was before the internet, and find out all I could about worms. And then I spent the next 10 years just trying to find out all I could about worms and what they did. And probably the biggest thing that I discovered, it took a while, but I realized that the worms are the workers that the real product is the vermicompost. That's the thing that helps grow the food that you want to use and, and grow your vegetables in. It makes the vegetables better. So um, that was the big thing over the first 10 years. And then the second uh, 10, I developed these uh, continuous flow reactors. And uh, we added a composting component to that and uh, just started making really uh, high quality vermicompost. We got involved with a microbiologist, uh, Vicki Bess, and she has helped us tremendously. And then in uh, 2012, a fellow saw me on uh, another show and asked if he could come and visit the worm farm. And I said, I don't have time today. And he said, can you give me just 20 minutes? And I've always given anybody 20 minutes. So uh, he came and he said, this is really fascinating to me, and you're authentic, and your vision is good, and I like it, and can we talk? And so um, we talked over the summer, and then we decided to go into business together and grow the business. So that's kind of where we are today, um, doing a larger, a larger business. So this has all come from a five-gallon bucket of red wiggler worms. Right. Amazing. Amazing. And a dream. And a... And a I didn't know what the dream was, but I just started down the path. Oh, it smells like earth here. Yeah. What is that? That is a pile of manure that just came in from the West County Dairy, and it is a beautiful pile of manure. You can see the color. Uh, it just has this nice texture to it. It's yellowish, so it's already pre-moistened, which is a big deal. Nice. Uh, it's peat moss will come in dry and it takes forever, but that's gonna just be pre-moistened. It's gonna heat up by tomorrow morning. It'll be 140, 150 degrees. Uh, and we were talking about this symbiosis with uh, the restaurant and food, but you start with really good manure. It gives you really good vermicompost. And then I take the vermicompost and grow really good food with it organically and then prepare it and serve it to our clientele. Right. Amazing. So. And then what they don't finish on, the, on their plate goes into our composting system stream right. that becomes composted and then can be fed to the worms. Right. And this, it's just this whole circle. Right. Oh, that's really hot. Yeah, so this is our primary uh, composter. When the manure comes from the dairy, we put it in here and you can see how hot that gets. That's 152 degrees. And you've got your hand up there. If you left your hand there, it'd burn it. Uh, and steam is coming off now. We're trying to cool down the bin a little bit. So we'll blow air up through the floor. And on a moist day like today, you can see the condensation that blows off with the compost. So it's pretty amazing. Yeah, this is like a primary fermenter um, or a primary compost bin. So we get the first weed seed kill, the first pathogen kill here, 
and then we'll move it to the to the next bin. Actually, it'll go to that third one that's empty right now. So we'll move this today or Monday morning over to the next one. So it's a rotational system and we'll feed next week out of the one that's right there and then the following week this will be food for the worms. So and then we'll get new food in. So it's just constantly rotating four sets of bins around so that we have enough food to feed the worms here and to feed the worms over at the worm farm. So how long does it sit in here for until it's ready to feed? Um, a, a week or so, yeah. a little longer, and then another week or so in the other one. Uh -huh. And uh, and then we'll and then it will coo have cooled off enough so that when we feed it uh, onto the bed that it won't heat up the worm bed and kill the worms. So, but the, there will still, so the dance is, we want to have enough food value there for the worms, but we don't want to have so much heat that it heats the bed up. So we're taking some of the heat out, um, but we don't want to take all the heat out because that's food. It's balance. You can see these beds were just fed yesterday and the worms are already up into it. Uh, and then the worms will work on it for 60 days. Uh, what we fed yesterday uh, will come out the bottom. We, it's a continuous thing of feeding and cutting. But you can see the beds are down a little bit now. We've, we're cutting a little more than we're feeding because we have such high demand for material. But we'll, usually they're up at the top. And what we feed will come out the bottom in 60 days and then we'll screen it and sell it. So the worms work on, the, on, on it for a minimum of 60 days. And they continuously work their way up to the food. Correct? Right, exactly. They, they're like teenagers. They want to be fed and they want to be watered and they'll <laughs> stick at home and they party and they have a great time. And so the fresh food, they want the fresh food. Um, we've seen that they'll let the babies uh, get the, the, the easy stuff and some of the adults will go down a little more to, to get some of the harder stuff. Interesting. But uh, this time of year they're dropping off a lot of uh, little egg cells and a couple worms pop out after 30 days. So that's kind of the process. And then we'll, uh, we'll do a field ready blend where we just va vacuum it up and put it in a bag and they use that to plant. And then we also will screen it. Uh, we've got a lot of propagators that are starting to use it. We have uh, soil blending companies large soil blending. They come in a big Walmart sized truck now. We'll sell 44 yards at a time. Right. Um, so this little worm farm has, has really grown and uh, that will be the screen material. And then we also have a product that comes out the end uh, overs and people will use that for orchid mix or for uh, putting on a vineyard in kind of a rougher style. So you know, I think that that's so that's so important um, that you got to trust where you are. And I knew, and it was time for me to stop flying. I knew it was time for me to get involved with this. I didn't. I had no idea that it would turn out like this, but I just knew I wanted to follow where it led. I wanted to go down that path, and uh, I am so glad that I did. You know, there's like anything. There's ups and downs, but. Uh, the path has always been true and, and it's exciting. It's exciting to do something that, you know, my FAA doc used to say, you always want to have an appointment with tomorrow. And there's always an appointment for tomorrow with, with 40 million worms, you know. So. It's, so, it's so true. It's, it's like us transitioning out of the restaurant business, getting into other things, you know, maybe helping you develop product, different products, but also, um, teaching, bringing young, pe young people into the culinary world right. and, and leading some culinary trips and that sort of thing, but bringing your product into the mix as well. I mean, it's, we're in it together. It's, I've learned so much just being out here. Uh, you're amazing and I admire you for the work that you do mm -hmm. and I admire your facility and I definitely admire your product because it just does wonders for what we try to grow and raise. Um, so, and I hope to be involved in your future. Great. Yeah, me too. In one, one form or another. All right. Thanks Thank you, coming. my friend. All right. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.